And a very good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Issues and Attitudes. My guest today is Christina Browning, Chairman of the Mattoon Arts Council. Welcome, Christina. Hello. Thanks for having me. I oh, appreciate you coming in uh, so much today, or actually calling in. we got to abide by all, all of our, of course, uh, social distancing uh, rules here. So, Christina, I wanted to have you on uh, for a couple of reasons, but as we uh, as we talk today, the main thing I wanted to talk about is, you know, you're a council, you're the president or the chairman of the Mattoon Arts Council, as well as a business owner in Mattoon. So talk about the pandemic and, you know, how it has affected you as a business person, but as also as, as really the uh, chairman of the, of the Arts Council. Sure. Um, for, well, for the Arts Council, um, we are a group that supports, develops, and promotes quality and affordable arts programming um, and activities for all different ages. And so um, we have had to cancel some different events that we had coming up, such as our spring art show, um, where we showcase students, amateurs, and professionals um, to display their artwork. And we have people from all different um, counties, um, usually included in that art show. Um, and then we also had to cancel our biggest event that we do of the year, which is um, the Artwork Festival. And so with that one, um, usually we have a lot of different artists selling their artwork. Um, we have different musicians playing on our um, Heritage Park stage outdoors, as well as the Lone Elm Room indoors. Um, and so with that, um, with the coronavirus, we had to definitely um, cancel that. And it's just really upsetting because we know a lot of artists, they really count on that type of income whenever they do vendor fairs um, or even performers for that matter. How frustrating, um, so, oh, go ahead. I just wonder how frustrated ahead. you were individually when you know things like this are canceled. Um, it's a little bit overwhelming more than like frustrating or okay. um, there's feeling of like sadness, but um, just having to hustle and figure out what's our next step to do. Do we cancel um, with everyone else canceling? Um, do we hold it virtually online? Um, just things that you never would think about, yeah. um, especially as like a business owner even, um, or even just um, being on the council to consider um, with what are the next steps that you need to do. Now talk about your, you, you're also a business owner, I'm artsy chic, right? Is that a Yes, Earthy yeah. Chic Studio in Mattoon. And so as a business owner, then you have to, you know, are you, I assume that you're closed or are you open for appointment? How does that work? Yes. Yeah, so we are considered a non-essential business being a art studio. Um, and so we have been closed um, as of March 20th. Um, before then, we did do like pickup kits where people could come and pick up um, artwork and, and be able to work on it from home. Um, but then once they decide the governor closed our business, um, then that's where we had to start pivoting and figure out something different to do. So for us, um, we are getting ready to have like subscription boxes start going out the doors. And um, May 1st, we're going to start doing our um, pickup kits again um, so that people can come and pick up kits and take them home and be able to work on artwork at home. Okay. Well, let's learn a little bit about you before we get into some other details. Christina Browning is a, a Mattoon High School graduate. Uh, what got you interested in the arts and a little bit of stuff about you? Sure. Um, I've always loved art. Um, I actually um, was involved in musical theater and dance um, through school as I was growing up. Um, I went to EIU for art and studied 2D design, printmaking, and painting. Um, I also had a minor in business. Um, I graduated from EIU. And yeah. I just stayed in this area. So, yay, EIU. There you go. The other thing that I know that the, the Mattoon Arts Council was involved in is the um, the summer arts camps where there were some uh, candidates who got scholarships. I believe the Libuvets Lively Scholarship. Will those continue this year? Or do you have to put those on hold? What's the process? Yeah. So, for the Libuvets Lively Scholarship, um, we have a group of committee members that select the candidates for that. Um, so we'll be meeting this week um, via Zoom to look at all the different candidates that applied for that. And those are for the Mattoon High School senior, seniors and alumni that are pursuing a degree in the arts. Um, so those scholarship applications have already been submitted. And so the selection committee will decide on those this week. Um, we also, um, for grades 6 through 12, um, students from Mattoon that are wanting to attend a summer art camp and it can be virtual at this point um, or it can be actually if they're having it um, like if EIU is still having their camps for example um, then a student can apply for that um, we our applications have already closed for that one but we are still giving out scholarships um, for those candidates that did apply um, 
if the camp is canceled, um, then we have decided as a committee to go ahead and allow those funds um, for the students to use for next summer. Oh, that's really neat. I know there's also a lot of uh, downtown businesses uh, in Mattoon that are very arts-related, and I know you, you you gave me a few people, so I was wondering if you could go through some of those folks and tell us what some of those individual businesses are doing to kind of keep the arts alive during this pandemic. Sure. Um, What's great about our Arts Council here in Mattoon is that many members of our Arts Council um, have their own businesses or they have had experience within the arts. Um, so, for example, um, we have Melissa Hardin with Studio 21 Photography. Um, I know that she's been um, doing some promotions out there to um, get, like, senior photos and stuff. People can book their appointments. Um, she's not necessarily taking appointments right now um, with being closed, um, but she's, you know, pursuing and getting ready to um, take all those pictures or whatever um, things do calm down and then um, like DeBurr um, Bernie DeBurr with um, Bur DeBurr Speed and Seed um, he um, has his own business and I know flowers are really important right now with spring and especially with Mother's Day coming up and so um, he has his business and um, I know he's offering specials as well online and then um, Carrie Jones she owns Radia media group and so she has that for her theater kiddos and then we have um mike callis with sound source music um i think he has some specials going on as well so there's a lot of ways that people could still be involved in the arts in downtown in some way if uh if they're interested yes yes and so um i just encourage people to um find them on facebook or go to their website and see what other like type of different promotions and offers that they're offering. Um, to be able to support an artist during this time is really important because um, especially like those that have a brick and mortar store, we have a lot of overhead costs um, that you don't necessarily think about. And so if you um, are wanting to promote an artist but don't necessarily know what to do, um, gift certificates, purchasing those right now um, would be really important to do. Um, as well as just finding out what other service or something they're offering. I know um, for us at RC Chic Studio, um, we're doing virtual um, lessons, um, so private lessons for students by Zoom. Um, and we also have like a take-home kit we'll start offering this Friday. There you go. Um we're talking to Christina Browning, chairman of the Mattoon Arts Council. One of the other things that I've noticed via social media over the past few weeks is that now people are trying to find stuff to do. And so family activities are obviously more important, but a lot of those do revolve around art and painting or music videos or handprints or stuff. Talk about some of the stuff that you've seen people do from the artistic point of view that have kind of brought families together during this pandemic. Yes, yeah, so I think um, you too, especially um, a lot of families have kind of been jumping on the bandwagon and I've seen different like music videos families have been doing at home um, just to kind of entertain their friends and family. Um, I've seen um, like trying to arrange like furniture or fruit or something to make it look like a like master's artwork. And so I've seen that um, from like a crafting perspective um, I know we get a lot of messages asking, what can we do with all our toilet paper rolls and, <laughs> and stuff? I know it's kind of silly, but um, just thinking of, like what supplies you have at home um, that you can work with um, to be able to turn into like an artwork and entertain others. And especially like with music, I've seen a lot of different music videos where um, people are actually kind of um, tuning in to their inner artist. And they're being able to perform for an audience. Um, and when you're online like that on Facebook or YouTube, um, you're not just performing for like Coles County, um, but you're performing like for the world pretty much um, if the video gets off that further. So, you know, in essence, in a way, in this in, in a terrible crisis, uh, there's actually some good news that's actually coming out of this family spending more time together as well as the artistic side. Yes. Yes, I know that a lot of families, even like me with my family, um, I have two girls and um, they have been drawing more, they've had more time to draw and so that kind of helps with them and then I have one that's a musician as well and um, so she's still practicing her instrument um, even though that like her um, recital was canceled, same for dance. Um, I know a lot of dance teachers um, have started to turn their dance classes to be a virtual classroom. And so they tune in at the same time their normal dance class would be, 
and then they they perform it that way um, just with their class by Zoom. Yeah, uh, Zoom to me was a TV show growing up in the 70s. Now it's this video thing that's kind of taken <laughs> over. It's amazing. Um, do you think that when, during this pandemic, since people are trying to find stuff to do in, in arts and crafts and dance and, and all this stuff has, has come to the forefront for people to, you know, not I hate the word kill time, but it really is kill time or find activities. Do you think this will, will actually spur maybe an interest in the arts and the arts community? I do. I really think that um, since more people are starting to get a little bit more involved in the arts, I think that once the virus kind of calms down and we're able to go out more in public, um, I do think that um, there's going to be a desire to want to perform. Um, so I think that people are still going to want to see that fire and then uh, not only like them perform, but go out and see performances. Um, they're going to want to go um, and do like wine tastings and look at the different artworks that are out there and either perform or listen to music. Um, so I think it will kind of um, continue and even grow, um, which is amazing because I think that um, Neptune, especially, like um, to be able to have art grow and become something um, more visual and visible for people in that way, I think will be remarkable. We look uh, forward for that. Now, I know that spring artworks, uh, spring art show, and the artworks have all been canceled. Is there a chance to push them to the fall, or do they just get canceled this year with the hope of bringing them back next year? Um, well, we like to perf or have um, quality programming, and so um, we spent a lot of time getting ready for the artwork show. Yeah. And this year, we did make the decision to go ahead and cancel. Um, so we did consider maybe doing it in the fall. Um, there's a possibility we could have something happen in the fall, um, just to kind of get artists out there. Um, we're looking more for doing virtual, mm -hmm. and so to still showcase artists somehow, um, but to have it be from a safe distance. Um, where those artists' artworks still get displayed somehow. Um, but then, like, we're all safe because we're not actually um, being around each other um, less than six feet apart. So um, I think that virtual is probably more of the way that we'll end up going down the line. Um, my hope is for next spring to be able to have our artwork festival again and the art show. Um, we do a lot of other um, programming throughout the year. Um, so for September, we have our annual photography show. Um, where we have student, amateur, and professional um, photography um, displayed in our loan out room at the train depot. Yeah. And so hopefully we'll be able to be open by then. Yeah, that's the September show, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully, like I said, if we uh, if everything clears up, you know, this summer, early fall, you will have that. Is there other events to, that you would that are on the docket right now for after September, maybe through the holidays? Yes, yeah, so we do our annual quilt show. That one we usually do in January. And this past year, we had such a tremendous turnout for that. Um, so quilting is something I never thought that Matt Thune, like it's something that's like a hidden gem within Matt Thune. And uh, so... Um, no, I, I get you. Of, yeah. It's the same at WEIU with the quilting shows we have. You, would, It's unbelievable, the response. So go ahead. I'm sorry I interrupted you. Yes, yes. So um, I've been on the Arts Council for four years now, and... I, when I first came on, I never realized um, how, like, the quilt show was such a thing and how quilting is such a thing in this area. And so we have Jamie Willis. She is um, part of um, the Prairie Stitchers. And so her, and then we have Joyce Jackson. She's a part of our arts council. And so we have just, like, a tremendous group of quilting ladies that come together and they put on the show every year. And then Jamie Willis also does um, different workshops throughout the year um, so people can come together and be able to work on their skills a little bit more. Um, so it's pretty neat to see that. You've mentioned virtual uh, a lot uh, with Zoom and things. Now, the plans are to possibly do some virtual. Is there a virtual tour right now of anything in Mattoon that, that people can click on your website or the city website? Or is that something that's, that's kind of in the works? That is something that's kind of in the works. And so um, it takes a lot of time to be able to research and find the perfect platform to be able to work on. And especially since the Arts Council is a nonprofit, um, to be able to find something that's affordable for us to be able to um, put out that quality programming for people out on the web. And so that's something that we're working on currently. And so in the future, I think that um, it will be coming to life, hopefully by September, if we do have to continue with 
online. Now, I know I've read a lot and, and, and I haven't saw, seen a lot of them, but I know there's a lot of virtual tours of galleries. Zoos have gotten popular on the virtual tour as well as museums. Have you checked some of those out and, and any response or favorites or anything like that? Yes. So um, I have to say for like my children, their favorite would have to be like the penguins exploring that aquarium. Yeah. Um, that's pretty That's pretty fun to see the animals exploring their own habitat and get out of their cages and be able to like kind of look around and see what's going on. Um, I think like for art, I know a lot of different galleries are showing, showcasing their artwork um, where like they're supposed to have a big opening show and like now you can just like go onto the museum website and be able to um, see what artwork. Um, and I think that like since art in schools right now, um, having to figure out something extra to do for your artist at home, um, to be able to like go to a website where you just look up one of the museums and to look at like let's say um, the Mona Lisa, for example, to be able to look at the Mona Lisa and be able to kind of maybe write about it and reflect on it a little bit more. Um, but then once the pandemic calms down and then you can actually get to go out into the museum and see the artwork in real life, I think it's going to be even more awe-inspiring. That is pretty cool, the, the world we live in now. Um, over the weekend, Matt Toonham, uh, the city of the township, announced that Lytle Pool is going to be uh, closed for the summer. I know you don't work for the city, but as a Matt Toonham Arts Council, are you concerned now that the Coles County Fair and Bagel Fest are kind of next in line, or is there still some hope in, in, from your opinion? Um, well, there's always hope, and there's always um, where something could change. And so I know a lot of people are really disappointed right now, um, especially with things that... Um, they make traditions with their families and make memories. And so um, for us, we do movies in the park on Friday nights oh, in Lytle yeah. Park. I forgot about that. And yeah, so you're right. we, we do that in um, conjunction with the Matching Public Library. And so um, wondering, okay, are we going to, is that going to be canceled as well? And um, trying to think of ways where families can still get out safely um, and be able to do some of the things that they used to. And so I'm curious to see how... Um, those different groups will pivot um, to be able to offer those things to our community. Um, but we're not all too disappointed, but things can always change too. And so I'm one of those who are pretty optimistic and I'm like, well, there's a light at the end of the tunnel or, <laughs> um, you know, even though that door closed, another one opened. So um, I like to think of it in a more positive light that it's going to prepare us to do extra things. And some of those extra things could be amazing things. There you go. We are talking to Christina Brown, Browning, the chairman of the Mattoon Arts Council today on issues and attitudes. Um, from your point of view on the Mattoon Arts Council, once things get, I hate the words, back to normal, but once returned to some semblance of normal, um, is there other things that you'd like to see the, the Mattoon Arts Council do, get involved with? Do you have a wish list of some things? Yes. Yeah, so one thing that I know that um, we kind of dip our toes into a little bit um, in December, we had a production of A Christmas Carol. And we did that um, from like a standpoint where we want to start offering some more theater programs. And so I would like to see a little bit more theater um, happening within the Matching Arts Council and to be able to have actors and actresses and dancers and musicians um, come together and be able to perform like that in a community setting. Um, I think it's really good for young artists um, to be able to look up to um, the more experienced actors and actresses and musicians and dancers for that matter. And so I would really like to see that aspect grow um, within the Arts Council. And we've talked about even having like a sushi rolling class and offering a little bit more with like culinary arts, um, even like cake decorating. And so there's some things that um, we've done years past. So the Matching Arts Council, we've been around for 20 years now. And um, I've only been on it, like I said, for a few years. And so um, there's a lot that I've learned from past mem board members um, that they maybe had years ago where we did like a ballet and did the Nutcracker. And oh. so um, it's, it's, it's exciting to think about, wow, like we haven't did that in so many years. Let's bring that back. And so there's a lot of things that we're considering bringing back and getting back on stage um, so that we can have that showcase in our Lone Elm room. Speaking of, uh, you know, board members now, um, is how many board members are there, and then when do they get reelected? And take us through some of that process of how the Mattoon Arts Council is formed. Sure. Um, so the Mattoon Arts Council is formed of 11 board members. 
we are elected on um, by the Mattoon um, City Council. And so um, you serve a term of two years. Um, we do have a nomination committee within the Earth Council that votes and kind of decides on. Um, we look at all the different um, maybe area artists. And when we talk about art, art, it's visual, language arts, performing arts. And so it can be anywhere from like art, photography, floral design, creative writing, music, dance, theater, um, business owners, lawyers even, um, if they've had experience with the art. So we kind of look at what good candidates we might be able to have on the Arts Council, yeah. and then there's a process of first like, voting them on. Okay. Now, what, what led you to say, hey, I want to be on the Mattoon Arts Council board? board. Sure. Um, so for me, I've had Artsy Chic Studio for six years now, and we've had our brick-and-mortar location for three. And um, so I've been on the board for four years, but um, I did a paint-and-sip class, and I participated in artworks as a vendor um, five or six years ago. And so I was asked to come on. And so um, I, it's something that I've looked into, and I was like, oh, well, how can I be on the Mattoon Arts Council? And then um, luckily they reached out to me and asked me to be a part of it. That's cool. um, but I have to say, it's been an amazing experience having a storefront in downtown Neptune and to also be a part of the Arts Council. Um, so we've had like the featured artist wall, and um, it used to be in the common ground. Um, we've had that wall in the art studio where we showcase um, local artists. Um, so we've had like Riddle Elementary School, um, Nick Taylor with Diligent Hands Metalworking. Um, we've had a couple other artists, um, Lisa Hardin, she had her photography hanging up in the art studio. So it's been kind of fun to be a part of that. There you go. How concerned are you with arts in the school? Uh, they're kind of always on the funding uh, chopping block, it seems, uh, over the years. Um, what would you say to, to our leaders in Springfield about arts in school? I have to say that art is so important when it comes to art and music and um, drama and all of that. Um, these are outlets for kids. Um, a lot of anxiety um, is out in the schools um, with more and more children, um, especially like um, having more access to electronics and being online in the virtual world and then things going on right now with the coronavirus. Um, art is an outlet for these kids and adults. And so I think it's very important. Um, and so I would definitely say don't don't put that on the chopping block. We need art um, because it's a nice outlet for these kids. Are you still are you involved with the murals around town too? And is there a scheduled new one coming, or what's the, what's the status of that in Mattoon? Yes. Yeah, so we do have um, another mural coming. Um, it is I'm not very good with directions, like <laughs> northwest, east, south. You're um, talking but to the it's same way. <laughs> yeah. So um, it is going to be across. From if you're in the parking lot at the train depot in Mattoon, um, there's this big wall, and so it's going to be on the big wall, that brick building that's in the parking lot there. Okay, 1632. So that's 1632 that. Broadway. Are you impressed that I knew that? Yes, I am very impressed. You know why? <laughs> that's where know. WMCI used to be, and that was our address. So a long oh, time, a long time okay. ago when I worked there. <laughs> but oh, that's nice. what, yeah, there you go, right across there. All right. Um, we have a few more minutes left with Christina Browning today, chairman of the Mattoon Arts Council. What is your, or, I mean, I think I know this, but I'm going to ask uh, anyway, what is your kind of artistic uh, skill set? What, what are you the best at in, in the world of arts? I would say I'm probably the best at painting. Okay. That's and what I painting and drawing. Yeah. Okay. Do you have a favorite painters or somebody out there that just, that's, that's your person? Um, my person would probably be Monet. Um, I actually got to experience going um, to his home in France, in Zivernie, and um, got to see his water lily garden and um, experience all that art when I was in high school. And so um, he's probably my favorite artist, mainly because I love like his use of colors and it's impressionistic art. And so, you know, when you're up close, it's super blurry and far away, it looks like a picture. And I just, I love his artwork. I've always been drawn to more of the impressionistic painter. Is there one painting of his that just is that that's the one? Um, I really like his, I like all the Water Lily series, honestly, I really do. And to see them in real life, um, a lot of them are just so large and big. And to think like, wow, that artist did that large of a painting. Um, he had really bad eyesight. He had cataracts. And so um, to think like, how did he do that? And he couldn't really see that well. Um, it's very impressive. That is cool. Do you have a mentor that kind of guided you in the uh, in the painting and the artistic world that you looked up to, a teacher, a professor, or somebody in the in the business? Yeah. So 
Um, I actually, Janon Colden, she was my art teacher in high school. Um, I always admired her. And so I didn't really want to be an art teacher per se, which is funny now because now I am an art teacher having my own art studio and teaching all the students. But um, so she was a big mentor for me. And then um, at EIU, I had to meet for a month. Um, She was my printmaking professor, and um, she was just very encouraging throughout the process of um, getting my degree, um, being a non-traditional student. I had a family at the time, and so I just, I had a really great experience um, going to school for art. If you can, and we all are allowed to, are you got any summer vacation plans? Are you going to be able to go anywhere this summer? Um, Well, um, (laughs) I'm hoping to actually... Um, become Bob Ross certified and to be able to start teaching the landscape series um, at the art You're just trying to butter us up because we're WEIU, aren't you? (laughs) (laughs) So we're hoping hoping, um, that we still get to do that certification. I know a lot of things have been canceled lately and so they might be able to, I was hoping to be able to do that, but um, if not, then we're just going to hang out at home and make the best of it. There you go. Advice to young artists out there, a, a, a small ch- child that is interested in painting or music or any of it. What, what, what's the advice from Christina Browning? I would say find a mentor um, or even just keep looking on the Internet if you're interested in, like, learning more about it. Um, do your research and just keep practicing. Um, I don't say practice makes perfect. Um, you can get better with practice. Um, but to find something and find somebody who can help guide you along the way is really helpful. And so for me, I have a lot of students I teach private lessons to and um, within art, and they want to learn from painting to drawing um, to all those different things, or even clay and pottery. And so to be able to find somebody that you can kind of work alongside with um, becomes helpful throughout your career. Do you have a favorite art gallery or museum or zoo or place that you love to uh, visit as much as you can? Um, I like going up to Chicago. I like to um, go up to museums up there. Um, but I've I've been to so many different ones. <laughs> um, France obviously would be my favorite, but um, but I really couldn't pick with just one. I just I really like a lot of them. How many different ones have you been to? Yeah, you know, over a hundred, less than a hundred. What? Um. Okay, not a hundred. That's a lot. <laughs> I was thinking probably more like along the lines of like 20 or 30. Um, but then there's like little ones you don't even really think about um, when you're trying to think about what museums you can go and visit. So um, check out the local ones, the local um, like art exhibits or museums. Those are actually really surprising. Um, you can find some hidden gems in those. Well, we appreciate you coming on so much today, Christina Browning, of the, the chairman of the Mattoon Arts Council. We appreciate it. And uh, we, we wish you the best of luck. Stay safe out there. And, uh, Again, thanks so much for coming on, and I, I told you it wouldn't be that hard, would it? No, it wasn't too bad. I figured so. Um, and if somebody wants to get a hold of you real quick, the easiest way is to? Um, you can visit our website, rcchicstudio.com, um, or to send us an email um, through our website. Um, you can also give us a call um, at 217-258-8278. Um, we look forward to having our summer art camp kit come out very soon as well. All right. Have a great day. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me.